Now let us start new chapter Laplace transform. So first question is this: input signal uh, signal x t is given as e to the power minus 2 t into sigma of t. Sigma of t is available in the power of signal. Okay. In the first part, we have to determine ROC, and in the second part, we have to write down Laplace transform of signal x t. So uh, let us proceed for first part. Signal x t is equal to e to the power minus 2t into sigma of t. Now, what are values of sigma t for t less than 0 and t greater than 0? As we know, for t less than 0, sigma t is minus 1 and for t greater than 0, it is 1. So, what we are going to do? We will write down signal x t for t less than 0 and for t greater than 0. So, we have to write down this signal for two conditions for t less than 0 and t greater than 0. Now, for t less than 0, signal t is how much minus 1. So, e to the power minus 2t into minus 1. For t greater than 0, signal t is how much 1. So, minus 2t into 1. So, function is like this, it is equal to e to the power 2t for t less than 0 and e to the power minus 2t for t greater than 0. Now, we can write down first part as e to the power 2t into u of minus t and the second part can be written as e to the power minus 2t into ut. Now, in the first part of this question, we have to write down ROC. So, let us find out what is ROC of signal. So, for first term, uh, region of convergence is sigma less than 2. Why it is sigma less than 2? Because uh, here signal is left sided and for left sided signal, ROC will be uh, also left sided. So, that is why sigma less than 2. Now, in this second part, we have to write down ROC. Here, ut is available. It means this signal is tending towards t equal to infinite. It means signal is right sided signal and for right sided signal, ROC is also right sided. Meaning of right sided is, it will be right side to a barrier. So, here ROC will be sigma greater than minus 2. Now, what is resultant ROC of x t? Now, we have to write down common ROC for these two terms. So, common ROC will lie in the range minus 2 to 2. So, this is the answer for the first part of question. Now, let us proceed for second part. In the second part, we have to write down Laplace transform of signal. Now, we have simplified signal x t in this form. So, signal x t is equal to e to the power 2t into u of minus t plus e to the power minus 2t into u t. Now, we have to write down its Laplace. So, first of all, we are going to write down Laplace of second term. For second term, Laplace is 1 upon s plus 2. Now, we have to write down Laplace of first term. Then, what we are going to do? If you will, uh, if you will write down first term with the help of second term, then what you have to do? You have to replace t with variable minus t. So, if you will replace uh, t with minus t, then with the help of second term, we can write down the first term. So, similarly, we will write down Laplace of first term with the help of second term. So, what we are going to do? We will replace variable s with minus s. So, which property I am going to use? Time reversal property. And according to time reversal property, if t is replaced by minus t in time domain, then in Laplace domain, s will be replaced by minus s. 
So, Laplace of first term is 1 upon this term s is replaced by minus s. Okay. Now, we can write down in this way minus 1 upon s minus 2 plus 1 upon s plus 2. So, we can simplify this minus in bracket s plus 2 where plus s minus 2 in denominator we will write down s square minus 4. So, plus s minus s will be cancelled out. So, minus 2 minus 2 minus 4 upon s square minus 4. So, we have obtained answer for the second part of question and it is minus 4 upon s square minus 4. Now, let us see what is the next part of this question itself. So, this question has three parts. Now, what is the third part? Now, the given signal x t which is this one is applied to an LTI system whose transfer function is 1 upon s plus 1, 1 upon s plus 1. Then what we have to do? We have to obtain system output y t and nature of y t should be absolutely integrable. It means first of all what we should do? We should write down uh, Laplace transform of output y of s and after obtaining y of s we will write down its inverse in such a way that uh, inverse y t should be absolutely integrable. Now, we have simplified x of t already and for x of t we have obtained Laplace transform. So, let us see what was the Laplace transform. Laplace transform was minus 4 upon s square minus 4. Okay. Minus 4 upon s square minus 4 and uh, in the simplified form uh, that was the simplified form and uh, original form uh, was like this minus 1 upon s minus 2 plus 1 upon s plus 2. So, we can write down in this way also minus 1 upon s minus 2 minus 1 upon s minus 2 plus 1 upon s plus 2. Okay. Now, um, system transfer function is already given h of s is 1 upon s plus 1. Now, we have to obtain system output y t. Output of LTI system is given by convolution between input and impulse response of system. Now, what we are going to do? We will apply Laplace transform. So, y of s will be equal to x of s into h of s because if we are performing uh, convolution in time domain, then we will multiply their Laplace in Laplace domain. So, this is the convolution in time property of Laplace transform. So, y of s is equal to x of s into h of s. Now, what is x of s? Minus 1 upon s minus 2 plus 1 upon s plus 2 and what is h of s? 1 upon s plus 1. Now, we have to perform partial fraction, then we have to write down inverse. So, minus 1 upon s plus 1 into s minus 2 plus 1 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2. Now, we have to perform partial fraction. So, minus. So, uh, we will write down in this way hmm. a 1 upon s plus 1 plus b 1 upon s minus 2 plus for this term c 1 upon s plus 1 plus d 1 upon s plus 2. Okay. Now, if you will perform partial fraction then a 1, then a 1 will be equal to uh, what we have to do? We have to eliminate s plus 1 and then we have to put s equal to minus 1. So, minus 1 upon 
s minus 2 in this we have to put s equal to minus 1 ok. So, minus 1 upon minus 3. So, a is 1 by 3. So, how much is a 1? a 1 is 1 by 3. Now, similarly we have to calculate b 1 for b 1. What we have to do? We have to eliminate s minus 2. So, minus 1 upon s plus 1. Then we have to put s equal to 2. So, minus 1 upon 3. So, how much is b 1? b 1 is minus 1 upon 3. Now, c 1 and d 1 calculation is very easy. Uh, c 1 should be equal to 1 and d 1 should be equal to minus 1. Because if you will write down in this way, then their overall sum will be like this. Okay. So, till now what we have written? 1 by 3 upon s plus 1 and here 1 upon s plus 1. So, when you will add these two terms, so numerator will have 1 plus 1 by 3. So, it will be equal to 4 by 3 upon s plus 1. Then, then um, uh, we should write in the uh, in the sequence for. It means if uh, pole is the leftmost, then we should uh, write down um, uh, in the left. And if pole is lying in the right, then that particular term we should write down in the right side. So, here pole will be the uh, leftmost pole because its pole is lying at s equal to minus 2. So, I am going to write down this term um, as a first term. So, minus 1 upon s plus 2. Now, no next pole is at s equal to minus 1. So, we will add these two terms. So, numerator will be 4 by 3 denominator is s plus 1 and now third term is minus 1 by 3 upon s minus 2. So, in this way we have obtained y of s. Now, the next most important part we have to decide which term inverse of which term is right sided and inverse of which term is left sided. Because a condition is given in the question and what was that condition? condition was y t should be absolutely integrable. Now, given that given that y t is absolutely integrable, it means R o c of y t should include R o c of y t should include j omega axis or imaginary axis in S plane. Understood? So, it is the property of ROC. If ROC includes imaginary axis or j omega axis in S plane, then signal will be absolutely integrable. Now, what are pole locations? What are poles of Y of S? Now, pole locations in y of s are minus 2, minus 1 and 2. So, minus 2, minus 1 and 2. Now, check in which range sigma equal to 0 or j omega x is will lie. And that particular range is this one. So, if we will write down ROC in this range minus 1 to 2, then this ROC will include imaginary axis or sigma equal to 0. So, ROC of y t, ROC of y t should be sigma between minus 1 and 2. Now, observe the nature of ROC. If you will observe, then nature of ROC is strip type. This ROC is looking like strip type and it is the property of ROC. If ROC is strip type in nature, then time domain signal will be both sided. It means by observing ROC, we can say that signal yt, yt will be a both sided signal, both sided signal understood. 
So, now we are going to write down y t. For writing down y t, uh, we have to decide for which term we should write down left sided inverse and for which term we should write down right sided inverse and we are going to decide this according to this ROC. So, according to this ROC, according to this ROC, we should write down um, we should write down inverse of first term right sided. Why? Because this ROC is lying right side to uh, this pole. Since this ROC is lying right side to this pole and what is this pole? S equal to minus 2. It means the term having uh, pole at S equal to minus 2. Um, the for that particular term we should write down right sided inverse. So, this term is having pole at s equal to minus 2 that is why uh, we will write down right sided inverse. Now, this ROC is again lying right side to this pole. What is this pole? At s equal to minus 2. It means the term having pole at s equal to minus 1 the term having pole at s equal to minus 1 for that particular term we should write down right sided inverse. So, this term is having pole at s equal to minus 1. So, for this term again we should write down right sided inverse. In short form I have written here R as for right sided and since bo uh, signal should be both sided. So, automatically we should write down left sided inverse for third term. You can confirm from here also. This pole is lying at s equal to 2 and this ROC is lying left side to this pole. It means the term having pole at s equal to 2 for that particular term we should write down left sided inverse. So, this term is having pole at s equal to 2. So, we should write down its left sided inverse. So, what we have to do? We have to write down right sided inverse of first term. So, it will be minus e k power minus 2 t u of t. Again, we have to write down right sided inverse of second term. So, 4 by 3 into e k power minus t u t and we have to write down left sided inverse for third part. So, plus 1 by 3 e k power 2 t u of minus t. So, this is the answer for the third part of question.